Hello Internet, your friendly neighborhood gaming machine here, and today, welcome to another episode of Forgotten Gaming. No! And today on Forgotten Gaming, I am going to be playing for you Torrens Passage. Torrens Passage was created by Sierra in 1995, and it was designed by the legendary Al Lowe, which is known for, you know, doing the adult-oriented games of Leisure Suit Larry. Now, Torrance Passage is a point-and-click adventure game, and basically you are um, in control of Torrin, and the in-game environments use, like I said, a point-and-click system. Basically, just place your cursor over certain spots in the game, and you're able to either examine the thing or pick them up. So, without further ado, let's get deeper into this game. to the lands below years ago. The lands below. She must have been evil to be sent there. Yes. And there's no way you could ever find her down there. I know what I'll do. I'll find this Licentia and force her to release my parents. I'm sure you will. Now, first things first, you know, if, besides getting these berries right here, you might want to, you know, get rid of some of the side stuff before you go to your main destination. So, first things first, go back to your house here. There's some items that you need to get. First item up for bids is this hatchet, also known as this axe. Next thing you need to get, which I'll show you in a minute, but this is the axe right here. Now, next thing you're going to get is you're going to get this rope here. This rope is going to come in handy a little later on. Now we're going to go in the house. Now, there's a few things to get in the house here. One of them is this bag. This will be useful later on um, in this level. Then you're going to get Inchy the Inchworm here. He's going to be useful in a little side quest, I guess you could call it, to get an item. Come back here. Come here, Inchy. Come here. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, of course, like I said, you can touch other objects and he'll interact with them. It's not just always picking up you know yeah, items and everything so, but so let's go ahead and get out of here okay we're gonna leave the house we got everything we needed from the house now first things first it's always good to do the little scroll thing that I keep doing but now it's time to get this leaf this leaf is going to be useful so you use Inchi to find out which leaf out of these piles of leaves is good and of course the one on the top right that I used on in that I used Inchi on is actually the leaf that you need so now this little interaction thing's gonna be going on here well it's not an interaction it's more like a just a it's not a cutscene yet but it's just a funny little interaction not again <laughs> this game never gets old, guys. This just never gets old. And of course, you don't get to use Inchi anymore, but one thing to know about this game is you have a companion with you. His name is Boogle. He can copy certain objects that you run into in your journeys. Like in this case, he copied um, Inchi the Inchworm and... He also um, copied that box that was from your um, actual house. So now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to this little part here on the tree, and you're going to have um, a little talk with these two snails. And the thing is, you're going to be giving these two snails the leaf you just got. Just trust me on it. And isn't that cool that there's two moons in the lands above where you live in? That's that's actually kind of cool. I like that. I'm Torin. Torin Farman. 
farm hand? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you look like a farm hand. I love that. <laughs> Torin's full name is Torin Farmhand. Well, farming, but farm hand. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So you can either, you know, keep talking to them or you can, you know, just go ahead and give them the leaf and you can automatically end this part of um, the dialogue. But for this case, I'm just showing you that you can actually have conversations with different people or even different things. I really like this game. You know, not many people really talk about Torrance Passage, but let's go and give them the leaf. Um, but people do talk about the Leisure Suit Larry games and stuff. Al Lowe is a gr is amazing. He's 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 a legend to me. You know. But then again, so is Sierra, but what's more legendary to me than Sierra is Al Lowe. Because this, this man's got to be one of the most creative people I have ever, like, played the games of. You know, not just Leisure Suit Larry. He's done a lot of other games, too. Especially, like I said, this forgotten little gem that we call Torrance Passage. Okay, here's a clue for you. Slugs, love. Scum. Slugs? Scum? Yeah, pond scum is good. Nah, you can have your pond scum. Bog scum, now that's the best. <laughs> Bog scum. Moat scum, now, that's what you definitely. want. Moat scum, that's what you want. Oh, yeah. Moat scum is your choice. Too bad you can't. Slim and slime. What do you mean, can't get it? God dang, man. <sighs> this game never gets old to me, man. But yeah, basically, there's two different ways that you can play this game in, in um, certain circumstances. You can either play it regularly where you talk to everybody and you get to your destinations and you backtrack and you get the items to continue on in your journey. Or you could do what I'm doing where, you know, you can get rid of all the backtracking, get rid of all, get all the items that you need, and then, you know, you just have it there at your disposal. But, you know, I like interacting with, you know, things in games too, so, yeah. Alright, so now, where we're going to be going is we are going to be going this way to the Emerald City. I think that's what it's called. It's an Emerald City. No, Crystal City, I think. Crystal City. It's been yeah, it's that's beautiful, man. That is just beautiful. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Mwah! So yeah, basically you can interact with this guard that's at this post over here. He doesn't really get you anywhere, but I'm just, like I said, I'm just showing this for tutorial and partial walkthrough purposes. So, I'm just showing you just a little basic stuff here. I'm not going to be playing the whole game. I'm only going to be playing um, two levels of this game. Because there's different worlds, of course. There's uh, the lands below. Um, there's Escarpa, which is next. Then there's um, Pergola. That's after that. And then there's Estinia. And then there's uh, Tenebris, which is considered the lands below, which is where you're trying to get to. And, of course, you're playing as Torn, and um, you have your friend Boogle, of course. And Boogle, <laughs> let me tell you this, Boogle is like your best friend mixed with a Swiss army knife. He will be very, very, very helpful with continuations in your journey. So, it's best that, you know, you see what items that he can turn into and stuff. Because, like I said, very, very useful. Like this guard. This guard is not useful at all. Now, I'm showing you this for a reason. There is ways to die in this game. That is a croctopus, guys. That's a mix between a crocodile and an octopus. Yes. Now, I'm only showing you that 
because I just wanted to show for tutorial and walkthrough type purposes that there is ways to die in this game. And this is a game that's not only for kids, but, you know, for adults as well, because I am over 20 years old. So I'm going to play this game. Uh, but yeah, there is also a lot of thinking that's involved in this game as well. But... I'm going to let you guys watch a little bit more of this and I'll continue commentating when I get all of the items here and I can explain things a little bit further because also after this level I'm going to jump cut and I'm going to show you my favorite level in this game. So let's continue on watching everybody. Well, I guess I'll just leave this delicious moat scum right here for a while. Now I'm gonna get you. Those slugs are so fast, I'll never catch them like this. If only I could make a trap. Boogle, can you make a box right over that moat scum? That's it, Boog. Now we've got them. No more caffeine for you guys. Thanks, Boogle. From out of the bushes, tiny scorecards appear. Five nine, five nine, six zero, oh, five eight, and a three five. Huh. Looks like the Eastern European rabbit is judging again. This works. <laughs> Got it. Oh. If I could only reach that branch. Now how am I going to get my bag? Boogle, stop! What? Boogle? You mean this whole time you could have walked right out on that bog? <laughs> Only when it's funny, huh? I'll only when it's funny you. Ow. 
Whoa, these spines are razor sharp. I'd better be careful. Okay, now that we got everything that we need, we're going to our main destination, which is this really interesting looking cottage type building here that seems to be fused with a giant mountain. Very weird, isn't it? So, you automatically take this axe and you try and break this crystal because there's a sign that's on the right of the door right there and it says in case of emergency break glass so we're kind of you know disregarding the sign and I'm showing you how to do that this guard here has been here for Lord knows how long and your mission here is to give him his final meal so he can leave and give you you know the authority of taking care of this specific very important landmark that you are literally about to enter into now here's something to keep in mind here is remember when I was telling you that you would have to do a lot of backtracking on a specific part of this level well you're looking at that's no place for any self In order to make his final meal, you would have to go and get all the stuff for that meal. Which is, as an appetizer, berry juice. As his main course, slaghetti and peat balls. And for dessert, root. The square ones. Don't know where he is either. Was supposed to be here ten, maybe twelve years ago. Never been this late. So, no, after we're know. done dealing with this guy, now you have to talk to him twice, though, in order to trick him in a way. Um, it's me. I'm. <clears throat> I'm your replacement. What? You are. Finally, it's about time. You must be ten years late. Where have you been? Uh, okay. Heavy traffic. Huh? Well, whatever. <laughs> Hurry up and get Oh, yeah. Here. He's powerful hungry, guys. Uh, Let's go make okay. him some food. Now, also in here, Boogle is going to morph into another thing that's going to be added to his inventory. Now, I did forget to mention one other thing um, before. Do you remember that spot where I had stuck the axe before? Well, it's what you would call an analyzer. Basically, there will be some items that you'll have to analyze and just examine so you can see what its importance is. Mostly, there is one specific instance where this will be very important. And that'll be in the land of Pergola. But I'm not going to spoil that for you. So, now we got to make this guard's nasty, ugly, last meal. God dang. And also, remember that bag that we picked up before at your house? Well, this is going to be very useful in a little while. Oh, uh-huh. I knew that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's still taught to all of us. What is it you'd like, exactly? You mean you didn't bring it with you? Well, you won't find no home fort comforts out there. Yeah, this here. guy can really exactly. talk. Now, if I wanted to, I could just I skip all this dialogue, but I don't want to. Exactly what I don't want to. You want for your last meal. I just really last like the interactions in this game. Hey. You. What are you doing in here? You my replacement? <laughs> oh, Why, yes. I am your replacement. You know, there's a tradition that the new And Boogle's just like, you know, walking so around. I'm going to fix yours. Staring into Damn nothingness. Right, I know. And I know what I want. He's like, when are we going to eat? Hope you brought it with you. What'll you have? 
And now he's looking at us. Now he's going that way. Boogles is going everywhere, guys. This is this is crazy. Okay, so here's the berry juice part here. So go to Torn and give the ju the berries to him. I brought you some berries. And then you're going to be going to take him to the little squeezer over there. That white thing. It seems that white thing over there seems to be a juice squeezer. Oh boy. <laughs> Sometimes I kind of wonder if Aulo was having a, an, an interesting moment in his life when he was making this game. <laughs> yeah. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> Sorry, had a moment. Say, what kind of berries are those? Why? Chuck bears. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Oh man, that cocky old mm, Jesus! Ah, now I'm getting a little good. hungry. But now I'm getting a little hungry. Oh brother! You, you know, know what, what I, I really want? Is? I'm kind of afraid to hear. Slugetti and, <laughs> and peat balls. <laughs> And Sorry guys, I'm, ha I'm having a moment. No this is so funny, man, Say to me. Okay, but see, because we got the peat, uh, the, um, the peat moss and the, uh, slugs, we don't have to backtrack for it. You probably just walked around that cliff to the deli. What? You mean, <laughs> just a little guardhouse humor, boy. Ain't no food within days of this place. Now get over there oh man, the just the thought of having head. peat moss mixed with right. like but this is my first caffeine day. slugs. Delicacy. Oh god, so nasty. Yes, so nasty. Yes, so freaking nasty. Well, at least it's quick to prepare. Here you are, Monsieur. Bon uh, at least it's easy to prepare. <laughs> oh god. This guy don't know no dang manners, man. My god. He's like mm. Yeah. Now, can we get on with Okay. Yeah, now, we give him dessert. Dinner, perfect meal. Dessert. And a nice latte. Dessert. Latte? No. Oh, stop your typing. <laughs> you can skip the latte. I Just like how he was like dessert. messing around about the latte. Right. <laughs> latte is good though. Dessert? I like latte. Why? I make a really good latte. That top and, peat balls. and don't worry, guys. Soon on my channel, I will do a full Let's playthrough sure of this so game. If I prepare you a, a root, and I will do commentary like I'm doing now. Bright boy. Yep. Good old. Because this game is worth the commentary. Fine. Here you go. One large root. Guess you could what say that this fix? episode of Forgotten oh, Gaming is uh right like a teaser Somehow for everybody. <laughs> hey, nice square shape too. That's We're gonna nice make pie. some root pie. Okay. How about if I make it into a pie? Now you would not expect this, but that bookshelf right there, that Torrin was right beside, wow, that a enters big into big a secret you passage. And and you're about chamber. to see it in a little bit. Ah, just smell that aroma. You know, there's nothing like coming home to find a square, square root pie. <laughs> 3.14, you fools! <laughs> Alright, here's a secret passage. Wait here while I get something. 
Now, honestly, in this case, it doesn't matter which shards you get. It really doesn't. So, I'm going to choose that one. Okay. There you go, boy. Now, this is the Phenacris Chamber. Now, in order to um, unlock the Phenacris itself, which is that giant blue gem in the top left, you have to get those four pillars down to make a flat platform, and it pulls out, and it like, I guess you could say it's like a combination of materializes and pulls out this small but long, um thing that looks like a bit of like an ashtray I don't know what it's called but there's just powder that's in it and you use your bag to fill it up with that powder it's called Arresti powder the Arresti powder is how you travel through the Phenacrists so here's your first puzzle and it's not really that hard there actually are a bit harder puzzles than this one see that didn't take that long and see, there it is. See, I told you, it's like a long ashtray. That is so weird. I don't know what it's called, though. But after this, I'm going to do a jump cut, and I'm going to take you to my favorite level. So, without further ado, let's go and travel through this Phenacrist, and we're going to jump cut to my favorite level, which is Astenia. So, let's go, guys. Felt you were innocent. Kurtzwell needed a scapegoat. All these years away from your home, your family, your friends, you must be so bitter. Perhaps I've learned to use the darkness to get what I want. I've heard you've become quite the powerful sorceress. Oh? But not quite powerful enough to overcome the magic of that color. Not yet, but perhaps soon. And when I do, I promise revenge. But what if you could return sooner? What? Ha! The color will not be denied. I could release it for you. <laughs> oh, Peckant. You know its spell can only be broken by royalty. And no matter how much you scheme, you'll never be king as long as the boy lives. Yes, but think, Lysenger. Who sealed the collar? Kurtzwell. That... <sighs> Wait. Are you suggesting you could become Arch Authority? Let's just say if you'll do a small favor for me, I'll do a large favor for you. And just what would that small favor be? Nothing much, just a little magic spell. Now, one thing you're going to notice about Astenia is, well, what? it's a very, very dark level. And I'm not really talking about in the sense of, like, hard to see. So the first things first is you're going to get this right here. This is ammonia. You're going to analyze it. it smells like ammonia. Now, first things first, you're going to use the ammonia on this right here. You're going to clean it off. And there's going to be a switch in the middle. You're going to hit that switch. Welcome to Asthenia. Huh. Come on. There we go. Now, watch this, and now you'll understand why Asthenia is one of my favorite levels right when I leave this door. Dude. Yes. Basically, Astenia is like a post-apocalyptic world. And man, is it really interesting. Yeah, this right here, you're supposed to get some cannonballs from this. I'm going to show you how this works. It has a nice little jig to it as well. Okay, it's one. 
own cannonballs. Man, these suckers are heavy. Let me get another one. And yeah, it is creepy looking, even creepy sounding. But you gotta kinda wonder, what was Astenia like before all of this happened? You kinda wonder to yourself. Like, if I was ever to have an interview with Al Lowe, one of my first questions would actually be, you know, what was the land of Estenia before, you know, it turned into nothing more than a giant lava pit? You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's enough right there. Now, basically, what you're going to be doing is, I'm going to show you this here. This is a trebuchet, also known as the modern term, a giant catapult. But in order to do that, you have to trigger it. So, the way that that picture was, did you ever notice that the picture that was on that landmark I just showed you looks very similar to this teeter-totter right here? So, what we're going to do is we're going to put the cannonballs in here like I'm doing now. I'm going to get on the other side and we're going to equal out the weight of cannonballs. I believe four is the right number. Yes. You hear that? That is the sound of progression. And we're about to go take a look. But yeah, like I said, yeah, we're going to need the cannonballs here. Or at least one. Now, like I said before, I would totally love to um, interview Al Lowe and ask him about the origin of Estenia. And plus what that magic spell was that, you know, the uh, that guy was talking about with her. So now we're going to try and catapult ourselves over there. So we're going to cut this. And yes, you can die in this. Like, for example, um, if you don't have a cannonball with you, you'll land in the lava. If you have too many cannonballs, you'll land in the lava. You will die in the lava. That's mostly what your death can be in this level. Lava. Any questions? Good. So, now first things first, what we're going to do here is there is an object out here that you need so you can get to that up there at the top right. And if you look carefully on the end of the path that I'm walking here, you'll see something shining right there. And that's what I'm going to need. And it is a wrench. It is going to be very useful to what is over there in that old, abandoned, destroyed colony type of thing. Also, there is an Easter egg in this level uh, where Indiana Jones is in this, but he dies in lava. The reason why I say that now is I don't remember how to trigger that Easter egg. I, I just do not remember. Now, just to let people know, there is no way to die in this lava maze. So, you don't have to worry about, like, clicking out of the bounds. Torn's not that dumb, so he knows not to do that. So, let's get to this colony here. Okay, here we go. Now what this thing is, it took me a long time to figure out what this was when I was a kid, but it's basically a giant fire extinguisher. So watch what happens. I'm going to use the wrench to fix it here. Okay. Now we're going to use it.
And now we're going to hop across the hot rocks. Yes. It's insane. Now this can get very overwhelming. So I'm going to show you the exact way that you can do to get through this little extra maze, I would call this. So just watch carefully and I will show you what you have to do here and then I'll continue commentating after we leave this maze. Okay, now, this is where you could actually die here if you don't do it right. So, just do this specific pattern here, and you should be able to get through this with no problem. Because as you can see, you cannot go back. You can't. No matter what you do, you can't. So as long as you do this pattern I'm doing here, you'll be right as rain. Now here's a catch though that you need to know. You can't just go to that end there where your path continues. You have to get rid of every single rock that you step on. Don't ask me why. Ask Aulo. Maybe he can tell you if he remembers why. So there we go. And right in this cave here is the Phenacrist. Which is where I'm going to be ending this episode of Forgotten Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, while I do this puzzle, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, click the like button and leave a comment below. And please stay tuned after my outro for an extra special piece of bonus content. So, this is Onyx the Gaming Machine. Thank you so much for watching Forgotten Gaming. And help me keep gaming alive by remembering the origins of where we all came from. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.
Congratulations, you did it. That's nice to see someone else has an Aldo sense of humor. That's why you get to hear this, my very own personal Easter egg, instead of the boring, plain old death message you see before you there on the screen. Anybody who comes all the way through this game asking everybody you meet about this evil sorceress named Licentia and then finally finds her and then tricks Dreep into following a recording of her voice and then doesn't use the book of magic on her but instead plays the bagpipes deserves much more than just another boring old death message. So here's my personal thank you for playing the game. And now, enjoy the ending. But whatever you do, don't tell anybody how you got this message. Instead, just taunt them with, why, I got a personal message from Al Lowe at the end. Didn't you?